Hey you all, welcome back to the channel, Amanda here. Today's topic needs not much introduction as this has been a stabilization tool used in the filmmaking world for decades and beyond and it's still one of the prominently used gears in the visual creative space, popularly known as the Steadicam. This is a highly specialized mounting device for the camera with a body mounted vest that is worn by a Steadicam operator. The vest distributes the weight of the camera rig across the body and allows for smoother and more stable movement, giving you the ability to move through scenes and follow actors smoothly, placing the audience in the center of the on-screen activity. The Steadicam was invented by Gary Brown with a groundbreaking debut in 1975 on the set of Bound for Glory. Since the Steadicam was first introduced to the film industry, it has gone through many changes. There have been many different models of the system and brands, and also there have been support stabilization gears to ease the operation for the Steadicam operators. The role of the Steadicam operator requires deep technical knowledge and proficiency, as well as theoretical knowledge on how to move the camera and how to frame shots and how to be able to use the Steadicam properly. Many Steadicam operators attend special training classes to be certified to use the gear. And today we'll be looking at a variety of film tools and work out how to use the Steadicam effectively as a full body rig, which consists of the vest, arm and sled, and how to achieve attaching a full Steadicam build on a rig shot and as a Steadicam operator myself, I thrive in the possibilities this method presents. So here we are, and we've got a rickshaw with the hard mount on it, with the smooth tires, and then I've got my Steadicam sled here with me, with my top monitor and my low mode monitor, all with balance. So now I'm going to take my camera, which I told you has my lens on it, my transmitter, which will be sending um, signal to my monitor. You can see I have from my SDI to my HDMI for my top monitor, my SDI which will be transmitted from here on the, on the, on the body of the Steadicam sled to my down monitor, giving me feed for if I have to go top mode or low mode. So now I'm putting in all of my cords from my monitor to my battery, to my SDI cords, my HDMI to the monitor and both the camera as well. And then I'm going to put, put on my Vlog battery that will be powering the camera. I already have, we have a power station down here as well. I'll be powering my monitor and my sled. Okay, so now that has been done. I have my camera on my sled. I have it powered. I've got feed on my low mode monitor, on my top mode monitor and my low mode monitor. For a lot of steady camera operators, they don't put a top monitor on their camera to lighten the weight of, the, of their gear on their body. But for me today, since this is a light weighted camera build up, I'm going to have this and the option of both my top and my low monitor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try balancing our camera, like the steady cam and everything to make sure it is properly balanced. I need it top forward straight to me and my dynamic balance good. And I need to achieve a three drop time to be able to do my pan and tilt smoothly for all of my shots. So now from the look of it, I'm not balanced entirely. You can see that my camera is falling forward and I have the back of my camera falling backward, meaning my front load is way much more than what I have at the back of my post. So let's do this. Um, so what I'm going to adjust, since I don't have too much, will most likely be my battery down here, just for a slight relief for you to stay steady. A lot of times you might not have an assistant. You also have to ensure that you are not too far away from your post for accident purposes. Yes, have a stand back on your, on your combo stand for safety, but as well, do not go far from your post. Do not, I repeat, go far from your post. So now it looks like I have my balance here and I need to check by standing in front of it and also here. So now let's check our drop time because that can really mess you up. Oh, 1,002, 1, Oh yes, I have three. So now what's gonna happen is I'm going to take off my gimbal from my docking bracket and safely hang it back while I wear my vest and we get to practice one or two things or one or two shots. 
and see how it is. So now I already have my vest on with my arm. We have camera rigs that can that can go as high as a 20 kg, like you're on your sled, it could be way heavier. So having your arm being powered up enough to like carry heavy weights, you also have to be very careful of that because if your arm is not carrying, you have your body carrying and that's like very, very dangerous for yourself as a steady cam operator if you want to go a long way in the job. The, this total rig is about 25 kg or a little bit more. My vest and my arm is about 10 kg. This is 5.5, this is a 4.5. And this compensates for why I said it's 24 or 25 kg. So let's do this. So I already have mine and you can see this. Yes. So even if I leave it and I'm just holding this, you can see how balanced I am. And I can jump and dance. So it stays. And that's why you should have a balanced pose because if you have um, sets where you have to like run to catch your cast or catch your actor, then you would need that happening. So that way, this is like your only hold and this is just touches to so bring back your pose to position. There you have it. Normally this is done on sides by the first camera assistant, but I love doing my steady cam build up sometimes with little or no assistance. I definitely don't feel like I'm a master by any stretch, but I do feel confident about offering up my services professionally. But like any movement gear, it is an ongoing thought process and learning curve. Now, this speaks for the rickshaw. A large camera setup works with different rigs, but how do you achieve this kind of shots, keeping pace with the action? That's where a rickshaw comes in handy. So here we have the rickshaw with the hard mount already mounted on my sled which I'll be attaching my arm to, to be able to operate my steady cam. So now for the tires, you will notice that these are like the small tires and they could work on smooth floors, flooring like this, a studio setup, somewhere without bumpiness and all of that. And then there's also a sand tire. It's quite big and they would work for you in forest settings, in rough brown settings. Like I said earlier, the rickshaw is a versatile tool and it just makes operating the steady cam easy because there are shots where you don't necessarily have to wear your vest and walk on the road and all of that when you can have your rickshaw do it. It just makes it easier for us steady cam operators when it comes to situations where we don't have to be, where we don't have to abuse our body or abuse the usage of the steady cam with our vest on. So now we have two positioning for this sled. There is this side could be used for different shots. For steady cam operators, you know how this works. You could, it could be used for different shots, like let's say you're tracking a shot by your side, you don't have to have your sled in front of you because then that means you have to be stretching out your arm and your steady cam facing the other way, so you're actually stretching your arms. So for comfort, you have this here and then you can turn your post in a way that suits you or is convenient for you like a steady cam gimbal could sit on your armrest and then that way it's just your grip guy pushing and pulling and you have your shots in place. So with that being done, voila, I do have this. So what we're going to do is the steady cam will come up here and then it's high right now because there's no load on my arm. But the moment the steady cam comes here, it drops down. So let me show you what it looks like and you see, I could decide I want it this way and if I was to turn 
my now you see why i said you can't have shots like this facing forward like you have a shot in front of you or this is like a side track this wouldn't work so that that would be a case where you have to readjust your socket your head mount to this direction enough to have your arm here and your post of a steady cam facing in this direction but in times where you have shots that has to be like forward or in this direction you could have your post in this triangular bracket you see down here but is it comfort for a shot that i'm going straight like i have a shot i'm tracking in front of me this is great because all, all i need to do is maintain my position make sure my steady cam is straight and balanced and my grip guy just does the pulling and the pushing and that's all that needs to be done so here you're going to see a shot that was done with a rickshaw from this. There's a smooth shot, there's a bumpy shot. There are many examples I could pull out from movie scenes and set scenes and you'll see how versatile this tool is. Using a steady cam with a rickshaw can add dynamic movement and cinematic flair to your shots. This is an awesome tool for sharing the load of camera movement. It is incredibly versatile. This platform can be configured for different camera builds. You can build it with your Steadicam, your small rig, your gimbal can, can also work for you if you're sitting on a, on a rig shore, over the shoulder rig, or sometimes handheld, which I wouldn't advise for safety purposes, except you've got on your safety strap on. The rig shore allows you to move the camera in new and more convenient ways, which can also sit the operator. Special credit to the grip guys who control the motor wheels by pushing, pulling, rotating, or moving the rickshaw in various directions as required. The rickshaw gear is built for different terrain with all sorts of vibration isolators as they come with different tires fit for different terrains. It's truly a versatile gear which requires practice and coordination. Thank you for your audience and for joining on this practical. If you enjoyed this video and found it educational, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share, and don't forget to ring the notification bell, which will invite you to our upcoming content. Until next time, improvise, adapt, and overcome. And I'll see you soon. Bye.